Welcome to BCIT's In Focus. I'm your host, I Bonasso. And I'm Josh Kilner, and this week we're at BCIT's Aerospace Campus to check out BC's largest provider of aviation students into the workforce. BCIT has been involved in aerospace for almost 50 years, but this state-of-the-art 285,000 square foot campus is only about a decade old. Training students to work on planes, helicopters, propellers, turbines, engines, and more. There's a lot going on in the hangar. BCIT News got a chance to check out some of the exciting things going on at this campus. Let's check it out. At BCIT's Aerospace Campus, students are trained how to operate and fix aircraft. Our reporter Amadoula Ramat toured the hangar where this learning takes place. Students at the BCIT Aerospace Campus spend most of their time inside this hangar to get on hands-on training. I'll be talking to a chief instructor. Let me show you around. Students are constantly using them. They get, they get beaten up pretty bad. The 10-year-old hangar has been home to big and small aircraft, almost all donated to BCIT, including this one. Different groups of students work on these planes. We have, uh, presently we have our avionics students working on it right now. Avionics students are uh, aviation electronics students, so they're working on the communications and navigation systems for the helicopter. But also our aircraft maintenance engineer M students, the maintenance students, will use this helicopter to do all the maintenance on the, the engine systems, the rotor blade systems, the landing gear systems, and all that, that sort of thing. During their time at the aerospace campus, students learn on aircraft of almost every size. They'll have worked on different aircraft systems. Uh, although uh, uh, a rotor blade system is a rotor blade system on a helicopter, there are different ways of doing that and students are exposed to all, this, uh, all these different types of, of rotor systems. And for instance, um, our avionics students will be exposed to different instrumentation systems uh, from very, very basic old-fashioned uh, systems you'll find in a very light, small, old aircraft to much more sophisticated systems, uh, EFIS systems, like on our CRJ aircraft. How much is this practical training at BCIT appreciated out in the industry? It's vitally important. Uh, I would say it's the most important. The thing is though, before you can work uh, hands-on on the aircraft, you really have to understand what you're working on, and that's why we spend half the day, 50% of our time, learning the theory about how things work. The industry really likes us to spend as much time as possible hands-on. What are the physics behind the machinery that allows us to fly? The air comes in here, so this is the very front, the inlet, and then this would be, these are spinning, these are being driven by the turbine blades back here, this compressor assembly. And what happens is a compressor assembly, as the name tells you, it compresses the air. So that air comes up these tubes up here, and it enters in the back here, and this is where fuel comes into the engine. So that fuel mixes with the air, and it's lit, but this igniter plug, it only needs to be lit at start on jet engines. There's a constant flame there. So as when the engine needs more power, flame gets bigger. This, you would mount on your high-speed shaft, and then that would go into your helicopter transmission, and then that helicopter transmission would drive your main rotor blades. Students at their higher levels get the chance to take the engines apart and put it back together. So they, they follow the manuals step by step, and that's like the first thing they always have to do is we want them right in the manuals, so they learn how to read all the manuals. They take the engine all apart, and then afterwards what we do is we get them to inspect all the parts so they use like precision and measuring tools so like outside mics, inside mics and they make sure all the parts conform to the manual specifications and then we reassemble it. After a long day of work inside the hangar, students can always drop by the campus's library and have a nap at these nap pods. For BCIT In Focus, I am Amadoula Ramat. BCIT students need to train extensively what is on still a critical part of many aircraft, propellers. Our reporter Carol Zhu has more. 
These huge and heavy propellers are about to be part of PCIT's aircraft engineering class. Future engineers are getting some hands-on experience. My name is Brayden, and right now we're doing a general look around of the, of the propeller. This is a 2D30 propeller. Um, just tear down, inspection, rebuild. Before coming to this program, Brayden was working as an aircraft part cleaner. Furthering up so I can be an AME and actually work in the hangar. AME stands for Aircraft Maintenance Engineers. They're responsible for the certification of an aircraft after inspection and repair. I'm just checking for uh, pitting and any signs of excessive wear. In the hangar, another group of students is practicing how to inspect propellers while they're being removed and installed. Same. So my name is Mohammed Iftikhar and um, we're, we are removing the propeller from the engine. So you pack the line. These nuts are held onto a bolt on the other side, and if you don't hold the bolt, the bolt's going to spin, which can damage the plate. Uh, for a 100-hour inspection, so the aircraft and, and propeller would already normally be in service, and so uh, it's just every 100 hours, which for most small private aircraft like these, it would be once a year. The job requires a high degree of responsibility and skill. A small mistake can lead to devastating consequences. If you like damage it while you're removing or when you're putting it back on, that can cause serious issues when you're in the air. As a result, it is crucial for engineers to follow every step carefully while doing the inspection. It's written in the manner we're going to move the inspection. So for example, the blades, what's really important uh, is uh, looking for nicks, gouges, scoring or scratches on the surface, just because these can create cracks. The 16-month program consists 50% theory discussion in classroom, followed by hands-on practical training in the hangar. Carol Shu in Richmond for BCIT In Focus. We've looked at components that help aircraft get off the ground, but what goes up must come down. We've checked out avionics classes to see what makes planes land safely. Uh, this morning was a uh, navigation check, or a VOR check, which is a um, test on the navigational aid of, of the aircraft. The runway will give a signal out, and the airplane, through a bunch of antennas on the bottom, interprets that signal and can figure out where it is. All we did was use a piece of test equipment to simulate a runway signal, and all we did in the cockpit was just verify that I'm putting in this signal, this is what we see up here. Walker, one, two, five, down. <laughs> there are two sets of instruments, one for the pilot, one for the co-pilot. Uh, so we had to check both sides, which is why we were switching frequencies back and forth. So one goes on, then the other one's off, and then one's off, the other one's on. It's used for IFR conditions, or instrument flight rules conditions. So basically, if there's different uh, weather conditions, uh, low visibility, for example, um, if you can't see, then the instruments will help you do that. So if uh, it's not working, then um, you'll be limited to sort of the flight conditions you can operate in. It's going to sound weird, but just kind of how, how, how scary it can be sometimes, because uh, because we're here, because we're in the program, because we're in the industry, I mean, it's not, it's not a nine to five job, it's not an office job, it's not somewhere you show up and you're kind of like, oh, hey, everything's going to be good. It's, I mean, they, they, anything that appears in the news, we hear about it here too, and we kind of go, this is why we do what we do, this is why we're taught the way we're taught, it's to avoid this happening. And it kind of brings it home a little bit. The people in the program, from avionics to mechanics or whatever, we all kind of see that and feel that, and kind of the instructors kind of go do this. And so it kind of just makes it different um, as far as why we're here. When we have a test like that or, or something like that, and we do the hands-on part, uh, we're kind of going, no, we do this for real. And when we sign for it, it's kind of like, no, I'm, I'm saying that this is this is the job, and, and that's why we do it. So. Coming after the break, we talk about women in aerospace, hands-on engine work, and a look into how helicopters function. Standby graphics, ready camera one. If you want to experience the fast-paced world of news, today on BCIT Magazine, striking. Make magic on a movie set, frame. 
and action. Or bring your creative ideas to life. BCIT's hands-on training will get you started. BCIT Television and Video Production. Your possibilities start here. The most rewarding thing for me has been the relationships I developed in the program, both with instructors and classmates. My sense of confidence has never, never been higher. I mean, this, this program has offered great opportunities to be in real world, real industry situations, and, and being in those moments and knowing I can contribute, I can do this. It's exciting to be in this industry and to meet lots of great people and to make amazing friends. BCIT broadcast and online journalism, realizing your potential. If there is one place the aerospace industry struggles, it's in its effort to recruit more women. Our reporter Carol Zhu talks to students about their experiences. My name is Timna Dimitra. I am in the Aircraft Maintenance Engineer program and I'm hoping to become an aircraft maintenance engineer. <laughs> Dimitra, the only female in this class, is about to join her buddies to inspect aircraft engines. Part of me feels like, oh, like there should be more females, but then another part of me says it's okay because we get to kick the guys' butts in the, <laughs> in the engines and like prove them wrong for a lot of things. And Dumitra is not the only one that has to attend a class of mostly males. Well, when I first walked into the class, I was, of course, very nervous. And I've never been in a class where it's mostly male dominated. According to Transport Canada, only 2.8% of aircraft maintenance engineers are female. Dumitra says there are many misconceptions about women in aviation. You're too weak that you're going to break your nails and cry about it. However, she's ready to prove that women are just as capable. It doesn't matter how strong you are. Um, there's always a way to go, get around strength. Um, we use physics to our advantage. Dumitra says women have some advantages working in this field that males don't have. To have a person of small stature is actually fairly helpful because we get into the small places that most brawny, wide-shouldered men can't get into. Male students are excited to see more women in this industry. It's honestly great because that kind of tells us that how much a woman is capable of doing and it's just not that the males have to take on all the tough jobs, the females can do it. <laughs> Like, honestly, it's just great. We have, we share last, we study together, we're just doing everything together. Having female in class is much more exciting. You do more work when she's around. We're not a boy or a girl. We're engineers, we're buddies. We work together, we study together, just everything's equal. Carol Shu in Richmond for BCIT In Focus. We are joined live by Chief Instructor Stephen Holding. Stephen, thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome. So, as we heard in that last video, there are only about 2.8% of women in the industry. Why is that? I think historically the industry has not been welcoming to women. Uh, the technology was different. The uh, types of people that, that were needed to maintain aircraft uh, were therefore different. Uh, we needed larger people, stronger people, uh, a bit dirtier work. The newer technology, new aircraft, uh, and a new attitude uh, amongst uh, you know, in the aviation industry has really helped change that. But we need to get that message out to young women. Definitely. So overall, what is the demand for graduates here like? Uh, demand for graduates here is excellent. We just uh, took a tour of students out to a large aircraft maintenance organization in the Fraser Valley, and they were all hired on the spot and told to come back, finish off their education, and then get back to work. Well, that's always encouraging to hear, isn't it? Well, um, we do know that younger people are still being looked at at the industry. What can we do to bring more of those people in here? So we need to let people know that the industry is different than maybe what they think it is and let them know that it's a, uh, it's a great industry with high-tech uh, testing equipment and uh, the training is excellent and the lifestyle is excellent as well. Awesome. Well, Steve, thank you for joining us here today. You're welcome. We now hit it back off to Josh down in the hangar. Students here are always getting their hands dirty doing practical work. My co-anchor Aya Benasso dropped in on a group inspecting airplane instruments. Hey, how you 
Imagine having a 40,000 square foot hangar full of airplanes and helicopters as your classroom. Well, that's the reality for these aircraft maintenance students. As a, an aircraft technician, most of our job is very hands-on. We're dealing with uh, all the components and engines and airframe related items on the airplane literally on a daily basis. And so uh, the importance of the students getting a chance to actually work on the aircraft uh, sets them up with the background and experience to actually go out and understand what it is that they're working on and to actually have had the chance to hopefully have done some of the jobs that they will be doing when they get out in industry here at school so that they're totally prepared for you know, the actual aircraft environment when they get out there. They are testing speed, temperature and pressure sensors on many different types of planes. The students are getting a, a practical chance to do some inspection or verification that the instruments that are on board are actually working properly. I was just amazed and like awestruck by like something, how something so big can fly what looks like so effortlessly through the air. For me personally, I believe that actually being able to go out into a hangar on the school and like putting the knowledge that you learned that morning into actually you know, reading a manual, and figuring out what the problem is, trying to diagnose it. It kind of emulates what your career is going to be like, because if you enjoy working in the hangar here, that's pretty guaranteed that you're going to enjoy working out in the field. I have an ASSO in Richmond for BCIT in Focus. Students use a deconstructed helicopter to see these machines' intricate mechanics. We follow Noah Bergstrom and see how it all works. On BCIT's aerospace campus, level 6 maintenance and engineering students are introduced to the world of helicopters. I took a tour around this deconstructed helicopter. It's a, it's a great visual uh, aid uh, for people that visit the hangar, because then you can explain to them how a helicopter works. And it's really wide open and it's simple to see. Virgil Umali just finished his 12th month of a 16th month program that he's enrolled in. He is currently a level 7 student. Virgil stepped away from his assignment to show us the basic ins and outs of helicopter mechanics. The deconstructed helicopter features color-coded parts to simplify. The cyclic is used for steering and is colored green. The collective changes the overall pitch of the propeller and is blue. And the tail rotor is controlled by pedals at the pilot's feet and is signified by the color orange. And this green one right here, if you look up, this is your cyclic. This changes the blades on the propeller cyclically. So if I like push down, that should make me go forward. So that will basically push all of the blades. As it turns forward, that like basically just points the blade down, right? Yeah, so it just spins that way. If you see there's like the, that's like the rotating swash plate on top. Here is your swash plate, right? That has two components. You have the stationary swash plate right here, which is connected to your cyclic with your green, right? So that changes the, uh, the pitch on the individual blades. Then this is your collective. That basically raises the whole swash plate up and down. It's just with a torque tube, so it's just transferring rotary motion into a linear motion, right? What the tail rotor does is basically just provide anti-torque to the propeller, to the propeller. So it just stops the helicopter from like spinning the other way the propeller wants it to spin. A different model of helicopter is also on display for students at aerospace. This version is slightly more complex because it features four propellers and a rigid blade system. BL 105 over there is a bit newer, but it would still contain the same controls. You would still have the cyclic, you would still have the collective. Also, the torque, anti torque pedals, right? It depends on the aircraft manufacturer and its design. The B-105 was donated by the Canadian Coast Guard when they ruled it was no longer up to their standards. Forgot about that. Hmm. For those, you always find it on the models aircraft. allow students Minus to learn in an extremely bank, practical way turn and, bank and are equally like appreciated by like staff. They've done an excellent job and it'll probably be here till as long as the school is here. Thanks for taking a look at BCIT's Aerospace Campus. I'm Aya Benasso. And I'm Josh Kilner, and we leave you with another look at what we saw in the hangar.